Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included Spaced Out DLC. In the previous episode we discovered a new planetoid using the telescope and we also visited the planetoid that is connected to ours in order to plan things out. In today's episode I would actually like to get a little bit into rocketry and I believe for that we have to do a tiny bit of research. Under colony development we have a little something going on, namely a spacefarer nose cone. We also get the rocket control station, a cargo module and the rocket platform. So that's definitely something we need. Not sure if we're gonna need the trailblazing module or the spacefarers module. There's also a payload unloader, a sweepy dock and a rovers module. So I definitely want to unlock the space program and then potentially also artificial friends over here. I would assume according to your comments, duplicants are not the first thing we are gonna send out with a rocket. We first need to do some exploration. At the same time I'm exchanging my letters once again because I need to save a little bit on sedimentary rock and we have tons of granite, also if we check this out there is just granite all over the place. So that's definitely not gonna be a problem. Another thing I would like to do is set up a secondary farm, namely for these Swedels. I discovered that we have access to lots of sulfur and there should also be a sulfur volcano somewhere on the map. As a matter of fact, we could go ahead and actually check out what this guy is all about. And then I want to dig down just a tad more, actually just two tiles. And we are gonna go ahead, dig a little bit to the left side and figure out what we can find over here. I noticed it is getting a little bit hot here. Actually, that is going to be too hot. Hmm, so maybe it is a wise decision to set up another exosuit station at this point. Yeah, temperatures are raising dramatically here and I wonder if that is because we have a leak somewhere between the abyssalite and the magma. You know what, let's still go ahead and do it. It is already 95 degrees in this place. Hmm, maybe we should approach it from the top. Yeah, that might be the better idea. So we go ahead and dig a little bit down here. Just continue our build and see what we can actually find at the bottom. I'm actually gonna go ahead and dig also into this direction. Good stuff. And then as mentioned, we're already gonna outline the next branch. So this is gonna come all the way down to here. We should be able to exchange these tasks with insulation as well. And then as far as I'm concerned, it's really not difficult to keep the oxygen in those exosuits. So I might just go with the same exact setup we already have going on. At this point, I don't really see a reason why not to. Right about here would be our liquid lock, right? I think I got this right. Research completed already, wonderful, let's dive right into artificial friends as well. And that theoretically means we have some stuff unlocked, such as the rocket platform. Okay, that is something I might want to build slightly over to the left side. I'm not sure how much this is gonna heat up things, but honestly, I don't wanna risk too much. So let's move up on this place. We're gonna set up a bunch of igneous rock tiles, just like that, and then we should be able to set up our rocket platform. Oh, wonderful, I even got the width right. Yeah, sure, let's go ahead and actually set this up. What is this gonna require? Just copper, wonderful. This should be enough space at the bottom so we don't heat anything up that is of importance. Already gonna prepare my bottle emptier right on this side. Now let's actually check out the Swedels. What do you require actually? Temperature between 10 and 20 degrees. However, they have a much wider spectrum when it comes to livable range. They like to eat sulfur, which we should get access to a lot, and then excrete sucrose. And I think that's the stuff we could use for the second type of rocket. The evolved form is the Grub Grub, uh, which actually has a different diet and is excreting mud. Intriguing. So we could go ahead, feed the Sweetle sulfur, and then they excrete the crows, and then we feed that to the grub grubs, which then will give us mud that we can use to make more water. I mean, not that we desperately need it, but it's a way to actually make water. The problem is going to be we will need to tap into the sulfur volcano in order to make this actually sustainable. But I'm definitely up for the challenge. Now, I believe it didn't say anything about atmosphere. So could we get away with just a little bit of chlorine and oxygen in there? I wonder. Obviously what we want is another critter drop-off point right there. We're also gonna need a grooming station that goes right... Oh, actually, hold the phone. We don't want this second layer of insulated tile. That obviously is gonna belong to the next farm downstairs. So we're gonna want our grooming station right here, drop off there, and research is completed. Nice. Let's check out if there's something else we need. 
there is the carbon dioxide engine that we could utilize. We've already discovered this actually, so let's see. Are we done with this? No, obviously not. We might want to go ahead and prioritize this and also go ahead and prioritize everything in here. Okay, we're actually practically done with this. Let's just set up the door and then I guess we can already get our first critters in here. So what we want is the Sweetles and the Sweetle larvas. We then want to go ahead and wrangle all the Sweetles up right there. And then what we possibly want is another row of incubators. So these guys are just extremely expensive. I think I'm just gonna utilize the entirety of my iron that I have at my disposal. By the way, I think now it is time to get rid of these doors. We should have enough materials to actually make airflow tiles out of these. And we're probably gonna go with iron ones. I think it just looks a little bit better. I only use the pneumatic door so the airflow is a little bit better. Surface breach. Oh, wait. What are you talking about? My duplicants have managed to breach the surface of our rocky prison. <laughs> Game, you are a little bit late. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like we are having a leak or anything like that. It's just the thing we've already had. Oh, by the way, I had to replace this contraption here with a polluted water because my normal water was just freezing all over. So that's what's going on here. Looks like we have two possibilities with Ashcan and Stinky with suit wearing. It's not piloting, but we can train them up to be a pilot. The question is, do we want to go for buff and decreased bathroom use speed? That is actually not too bad. Decreased excavation is a little bit bad, but I guess they don't primarily have to be diggers. Though so minus 75 digging speed, that is a lot. And it's just plus two athletics, right? We could gain some early morning attribute bonuses and husbandry is not going to be important for Ashcan. Stress reaction is not desirable, but I think we're going to go with Ashcan. There we go. We have a bed and we still have a mess table. Good stuff. Let's check out the schedules. We definitely want to have him in the first schedule or we already make a third one. Yeah, I'm actually going to go with the third schedule. Let's see, that's gonna be shift 3 and we want to move everything a little bit as well. Now, let me think about this. Do I want to give them eventually 5 downtime slots? I feel like 4 is already kind of a tough order. Maybe I can move this a little bit. So if we move the second shift a couple of tiles over, we should still be good. No, actually, this is not gonna add up. We have to move them maybe just 2 slots and then move those guys 2 slots as well. So their schedule would start right here and then we have 2 slots before the next shift. So now it's evenly distributed. So what I'm gonna do is put Ashcan into this spot and I'm also gonna move Ari over to shift 3. Yeah, I think that should be good. Let's get into skills, check out Ashcan. Do we have 2 Ashcans at the moment? So what you want to get into is piloting, so you can already go ahead and do that hopefully very soon. Wait a second, we already have a pilot. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, we are going to need multiple pilots anyway, so... <laughs> so apparently it's going to be our pilots that are occupying shift 3 at the moment. Man, I did not realize. However, we do have the capacity for one more duplicant, so I do not directly regret this decision yet. Okay. In terms of priority, of course, we also have to go for rocketry. Everything else doesn't matter at the moment. They can just help out wherever it's needed. Now, guys, there are actually a couple of tiles that have priority, especially the bedrooms, the bathrooms, as well as the mess hall. These guys you should build first. Um, hold the phone. Are we wrangling up the guys already? Where is Ellie when we need her? Now, of course, there is a little thing about this room. We need to make this smaller. For now, I'm just going to use normal tiles and do a similar setup that we have on the top. Ah, oh, Turner, please tell me you have enough materials to finish this. Ah, good boy. Wait, did I give the wrong command here? Wrangle these sweetles up already. Ah, looks like we could use another deodorizer in this spot, but we can actually take the heavy watt wire. But it's definitely not looking bad. There's a little bit of polluted oxygen still lurking around here, which is kind of understandable, working on it. Oh, I see the problem. I still have the Sweetles in this drop-off, so that's what happened. <laughs> what we want to do with these incubators is, of course, incubate Sweetle eggs. And we're also going to have them at priority 5. Is that actually the case? No, we had them at priority 7. So let's do the same thing here. Once again, this way we will be able to cook up all the extra eggs we're getting. Ah, wonderful. So Sweetles are finally arriving. I wonder if I could just keep them without atmosphere at all. But let's go ahead and make this liquid lock in case the atmosphere is not okay in this room. We will go ahead and exchange it out. 
As a matter of fact, we're probably gonna exchange it out. I mean, we could fill it up with some nice carbon dioxide. Anyways, time to make that liquid lock. Enable auto bottle priority 9. Oh, we can do this fast. And of course, we also want to add a Atmo checkpoint and we want to add an Atmo suit dock. We want to go ahead, expand this line to fill up the dock. And then I believe we should still be able to actually utilize the power we have going through our base. Even though the potential is high, it's highly unlikely we're going above to 2 kilowatts. I almost forgot we obviously need to deliver another suit out of copper. Please make me one. What a bastard! They just took the suit from this dock and put it into here. Guys, I need some priority on this machine, please. Yes, build me that. Okay, now we got the suit. We want to sweep that up and deliver it back to this station instead. Now, looking at this, the Sweetles actually have a little bit of an issue with my drop-off point. Yeah, the drop-off point needs to be at the bottom. So I think what I want to do is deconstruct things. And instead, we're going to add the tiles in a different way. Yeah, we actually need to do this quickly. Come on, people, help out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and fill all of this up and then the rest should be ladders. I still need my ladders in order to build the stuff here on the top. This then means we can have the drop-off point right here. This can be deconstructed and once again, we want to wrangle up these Sweetles. Okay, now what else are we going to need? Probably a critter feeder that we're gonna place right here. Then comes the grooming station right in this spot. And I believe that should be everything we need for those guys. I now need to go ahead and collect them, actually drop them off right here. But it looks as though we have another duplicate. Well, we're probably not gonna go for a duplicate, even though we could use one for the other world. But I kind of want to focus on the other world once we get there. So maybe just a bunch of nutrient bars that we're probably never gonna eat. Are we done with the rocketry stuff? Yes, indeed. No rockets in orbit. Let's create a new rocket. By the way, I'm completely spoil free for this one. So you will have to bear with me. But my presumption is going to be we need a carbon dioxide engine and we want to build this out of copper. Let's actually do iron. We have plenty of that. Oh, I already like this. This looks like uh, way more modular than before. Before you had to build the rocket and then if you wanted to replace a module, you basically had to take apart everything to achieve that. What we probably want is a rover's module, also built out of iron. That's good. And then the next thing we want is... Either an oxidizer tank, not sure if we need that for the carbon dioxide engine, but we could just go with the spacefarer nose cone. Yeah, let's actually try that out. Build that as well. What happens if I... Oh my gosh, this is amazing. So could we just go up here and keep on building the ladder? I think that might be possible. Or maybe we just wait with that and check if the people will be able to use that scaffolding. Another thing I'm not completely sure about, but I believe we could do that. Uh, hmm, let's actually start building the tiles out of granite as well. The sedimentary rock just has become a little bit too expensive, so I might want to go ahead and take this apart. The shaft was in the wrong place anyways. Okay, looks like we only have two Sweetles in place. One actually escaped here and the other ones are right there. The door is in place, so they shouldn't be able to get out anymore. Okay, the volcano right here is actually just a minor volcano. Not necessarily what I wanted to see. However, we can confirm there shouldn't be any leakage. This is just very hot terrain here. So I feel pretty safe at this point. I'm also gonna exchange a couple of these tiles with granite. I believe this just has a better decor either way, which we definitely can use in our base. And it's also keeping our duplicates busy. I mean, it's kind of a pity, but right now we simply don't have as many tasks for them to do. Therefore, they can do some busy work. Now, let's actually go ahead and track that resource, sulfur. Uh, we have 42 tons at the moment, so we can probably just go ahead and fill this up for the Sweetles. There, sulfur, take that. Uh, now, let's just keep it at normal priority. And in the meantime, we want to finish off this room. Now, at the moment, I believe the room is exactly 96 tiles, so that is good. However, as soon as we build those tiles upstairs, it's not going to be that size anymore. So I believe what we might want to do is fill up this area here as well, get rid of a couple of tiles this way, and then we might have to build just another tile or so to get things rolling. By the way, they still haven't decided to go ahead and build the rocket, so I'm gonna try to speed this up a little bit with priorities. Of course, exchanging all of the tasks gave us some more debris that we want to pick up, especially in the bathrooms and bedrooms. Oh, hold on, that plan doesn't even make sense. We have to take away tasks, right? 
because right now we are at 93 tiles, that would be 92, 91, 89, 88. So we're actually 8 tiles short. Maybe if we go ahead and dig up 8 tiles like so, we should be doing better. Nice, alright, that's what I'm talking about. This obviously needs a gas intake, but this also confirms that we actually do need ladders on this. And we might even want to build the ladders all the way up to here. Yeah, that should be enough in order to finish this. Let's go ahead and prioritize this as well. Otherwise, they're gonna take forever because of the proximity that we have set in the priorities. However, this also means we can get into ventilation and start planning this out a little bit. I want to go down all the way and actually just follow the ladders. However, at this point, I probably want to go next to my oxygen pipe. So we are actually going to down here instead and do something like that. Go all the way down to our current tanks. Now, actually thinking about this, we might want to lead this all the way down. Hop over here, hop over there and continue our adventure all the way down. Hmm, let's see here. We have to take a little temporary detour, I guess. Yeah, that is quite unfortunate, but we can do something like that. And we just want to go ahead and bring this down to our most intense carbon dioxide area. We are then gonna set up a pump, connect this over here, and what we want to do is actually a little bit of automation. Namely, we want a gas pipe element sensor, and we want to go ahead, put that right here. We also want a gas vent. We then need to go ahead and connect this with automation wire. Now, the thing is, uh, we want to detect carbon dioxide. If we detect the carbon dioxide, we want to automatically close the vent so the carbon dioxide can go through. And if it is something else, any other type of gas, we will actually open up the vent and therefore the system should be safe. The problem about this is we are going to need a constant flow of material. So it's good we have a buffer on the top using the gas reservoirs. However, this still means we are going to require a knot gate right here in between. So we detect carbon dioxide, therefore we want to send a red signal and close the vent. So that's how the system is gonna work. However, I also want a secondary thing attached here, namely a switch, so that I can turn on the system whenever I need to. So this will be going all the way up. We, of course, still need the bridges in place here. One there, one there, going all the way up. Then it's gonna go into our tanks. However, I would like to build these tanks on the top, actually, right here. This, I believe, isn't the worst of ideas. Uh, actually, I kind of misplaced that. This is supposed to go here. Hmm, let's build it one over and build another one and build another one and build another one and build another one. Oh, Nathan, you always have to exaggerate a little bit. But essentially what we want is a little bit of a buffer here. And I think we achieved that. So we are going to connect all of the output pipes here as well. And then right at this spot, we're going to hop over into the pipe right there. Uh, come on, give me that. Which means we don't need that connection anymore. Okay, that looks good. So we can fill up this entire buffer space and therefore kind of guarantee a steady flow of gases. So the system here at the bottom with the filter is actually working. Good stuff. So let's get this built, starting with the signal switch so I can turn this off right away and then I don't have to worry about the system. I can just wait until it is ready. There we go. Turn this off. Wonderful. Okay. In the meantime, we are still working on everything here. Uh, this should be done soon. Let's see the room size now. 91 tiles. Yeah, we definitely want to deconstruct a couple of these. Also, critter drop off. I want to set that to seven critters plus whatever eggs they're laying. They also have continued working on the rocket. I think everything is now coming together, slowly but surely. We might actually need some power. Haven't thought about that just yet. Let's see, that is a lot of tasks until our gas tank, so I do not worry about the exhaust too much. They had a size of 9 tiles in the previous version, but who knows what happens with the DLC here. The rocket looks rather small, if you ask me. New printables available. Of course, we want to do a little save game before that. Requires the light to sleep. This is such a nice addition. All of these new traits. I love that it's not always the same anymore. But yeah, I guess we're gonna take the Dreklet. And actually what we could do is just go ahead and make meat out of it. By the way, breathability in the base is not too bad, I have to say. But I'm tempted to add another sublimination station since we still have a lot of polluted dirt. However, we will actually be running out of this stuff. I mean, there's no more to dig up at this point. So yeah, it's a good thing we get into rocketry and finally explore the other planets. But all these building projects are gonna take a while. However, the rover module is done. View interior. 
add a new module above this one. Ah, this is so great. It is now truly modular and I don't have to deconstruct anything anymore. Now the question is, do we also have to build a rover somewhere in a rover station or whatever? We got a sweepy dock here and rocket control station. Ah, intriguing. This goes into the rocket interior. So that means I can go ahead, either change this module or set up a couple of things. We could go ahead and change the destination and obviously the planet we want to go to, there's no rocket platform on this planetoid. Use a trailblazer module or rovers module to deploy a scout and make first contact. Yeah, I mean we have deployables, right? Send this module's contents to the surface of the currently orbited planetoid. Ah, okay, so we can simply orbit it. And we actually have to target a hexagon we already discovered. This is so amazing. I love this new system. So this would be our target. There's no landing site, so we have to deploy the rover. Ah, so we can send multiple pilots, probably. Hmm. Or at least one pilot and then maybe a digger or so. But I guess in the beginning we don't need to do that. Let's also check the interior. Wait, what? What is... Ah, is this the interior of the nose cone? Ah, this is so amazing. So, uh, a vacuum. Hmm. I mean, we are going with our Atmo suits, but I'm not sure if they are gonna have enough oxygen. So we might want to send in some oxygen here. That is so intriguing. Uh, we have a flight statistics. Ah, okay. So we will have to get some rocket fuel, oxidizer potentially, flight status can, we can see here, and we also need some food and obviously breathability. The question is, can we actually build inside of this? Oh, this is <laughs> oh, this is absolutely amazing. I love this new system, but I, I kind of need to check what I need for this module. I might need some oxygen and food, so bring a little bit of food over here. And here in the cluster list, I can actually also see the rocket, so I can directly hop into it in case I need to. So let's first fill it up with carbon dioxide. And actually, just in case, I just don't want to mess this up and use too much carbon dioxide without really needing it. So what we might want to do, hmm, maybe not even in this spot, maybe at a spot where we have some power going on already. So I'm actually going to bring this up a little bit, remove that and that. We want to go ahead and set up a shutoff. So there's going to be a gas shutoff right there. And we want to be able to control that with a switch right there and that's gonna be connected here and we also need some more cabling power mm, give me the power power is gonna go up here up there and there this also means we can go ahead and put this back nice i'm actually really excited about this but i might keep this for the next episode some stuff has been built here gas pipe element sensor we want a carbon dioxide filter so that should be working out and we need power for this pump where could we take that from potential load here yeah i'm actually gonna go with the cheap cabling so that's just gonna follow this piping here we now have the final form of our stable here which is 89 tiles if we take away 12 tiles then we can go ahead and fill up this wall with four tiles so we would have plus eight tiles plus eight though is still one tile too many so maybe hmm yeah, so let me go ahead and do something like that. We're gonna remove these tiles if I can, and then I'm gonna fill up these tiles. Let me add a bunch of ladders there. And then I guess I'm gonna put the grooming station and the feeder a little bit down, and we're also gonna move this guy over here, the drop-off. I know it's messy again, but that's just the way I plan things. I, I rebuild it all the time. So we still have a little bit of building ahead of us. What I want to test out to wrap up this episode is uh, let's get into the interior here again. And then we want to set up a ration box potentially. Yeah, we can do this right next to that. But we probably need to utilize the space on the top as well. But if I get this ration box in here, set it to priority 6, I just want to see it, whether or not duplicates are actually coming in here. There we go. Oh my gosh, Gene, I love this. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually store something in here, such as nutrient bars, right? We want to do that priority 9. We should have plenty of those. They cannot go bad. So I don't see a problem with that. However, then at this point, we will probably have to move up a little bit and then we can set up some more tiles in order to build more stuff. And one of the things that I might want to build is an algae terrarium. 
Hmm, actually, I'm not so sure. Maybe we just go with the oxygen diffuser, though that actually requires power. So the terrarium might so the terrarium might be better just to fill things up, you know? Yeah, why not? Let's go ahead, add that right here. We're also gonna add a couple of tiles in this place. Uh, let's do granite. So we could have three tiles like so, giving us more space on the top. What else do we need? Food, rocket fuel, oxidizer, breathability. Hmm, yeah, that's potentially everything. Ah, you know what we could set up is a whole bunch of storage chests, actually. So if we added a couple of these bins, for instance, we could do that all over the place here, or at least three. And this would allow us to bring over some materials if we get this rocket to land, you know? So we don't only have the rocket cargo, but we could also add a storage. And actually thinking about this, we might want to exchange those with airflow tiles. So let's go ahead and do that as well. Hmm, let me go ahead and actually prioritize all of this a little bit. Alchi Terrarium is being built. Okay, so I'm guessing we're only gonna kind of utilize that as long as we still need oxygen. This looks like an airlock, so we shouldn't be losing the oxygen that we are already producing with the Alchi Terrarium. Ah, uh, ah, uh, there we go. Okay, this is so amazing. I, I really love this new system. Gene is actually taking over the job here. Wonderful. Okay, and now are we producing anything? No, we actually still need polluted water. And I'm still getting the notification from other planetoids, so that is nice. It is working. Yes, we have oxygen in the joint. Nice. Okay, so now I'm just gonna fill this up with maximum oxygen and hope that it's gonna be enough in order to do at least one trip. The storages in the beginning are not going to help because obviously we need to send down the rovers first and then possibly set up a trail blazer module so that we can go ahead and actually set up a landing pad. So all we would need is a couple of these materials. We can also store them in the storage bins we already established. And then once we manage to land on another planet, we just set up this platform and make the landing much easier. Okay, I think I'm just gonna let this fill up a little bit. Uh, we still don't have the food in here, so this is not good. Do we even have... Wait, wait, this could be a problem. Yeah, we should have a little bit of calories in nutrium bars. So maybe we're gonna go for the swamp chart hearts as well. So ration box, swamp chart heart, and maybe 150 kilograms is a bit much. Maybe we can do like 10 kilograms. But yeah, guys, I think at this point we're gonna wrap it up and then hopefully in the next episode or most definitely in the next episode we're gonna have our first rocket launch. But with that out of the way, thank you for watching. Have a great time. Don't forget to leave a like, but especially subscribe. You would do me such a huge favor. I'm really happy how this is running. Really motivational. Thank you so much. Have a great day and see you soon. Bye-bye.